tuned, stay tuned. This episode is going to be about protective styling and hair trims and when to trim your hair, how often to trim your hair, and everything good in between. We are going over pages 143 through 167 of dun, 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 The Science of Black Hair by Audrey Davis Silas Utley. So stay tuned. Okay, let's get started. But let me just tell you what I've been doing. I've been working out like a mad lady because I'm trying to hit my fitness goals and my hair goals at the same time. And I tell you, it's a lot. Let's dive right in. Lots of good juicy stuff. It talks about protective styling. Um, protective styling is really good for people who are stuck at the shoulder length plateau. Like your hair just won't quite make it past your shoulder length. Do some protective styling and you will break through that. And she talks about why. Um, she said essentially that when the hair rubs back and forth on the shoulders, that um, the flat cuticle orientation is disrupted and the cortex loses internal moisture and hair grows more prone to splitting and breakage. The fabric on your shirt can be can draw a lot of moisture out of the hair, it, it, with the exception, of course, of like silk satin tops because they have slit. So if you're trying to break past that point, do protective styling, and then your hair will grow out and you know break through that. You can bun it, and you'll you'll break past the shoulder length plateau. So I thought that was a great tip. Then she talked talked about the types of protective styling. So I thought this was really interesting. There are two kinds: completely protective styles which keeps your ends of your hair completely pinned up and out of sight. It's 100% protective of the ends and the hair. The second one is low manipulation protective styles. Um, the, she said that these styles may expose the ends to some, um, uh, may expose the ends some a little bit, but they drastically cut down on the day-to-day -day hair manipulation. So if you're the type of girl that has to be hip and stylish all the time, I get it, trust me, I do, and you want to wear your hair out all the time, then it's going to be harder for your hair to grow to the length you want as quickly as you want. So just incorporating a couple of protective styles a week will definitely give you the edge for your hair to grow faster and thicker and longer faster because it won't be constantly being manipulated and hitting the shirt and everything else and the environment and all that. Ponytails and puffs for relaxed hair. It's best to do your ponytails and puffs on almost dry moisturized hair as relaxed hair is very prone to damage and breakage when wet. So that's a good tip for any other girls who are relaxed. Natural puffs are best created on very moist hair, not wet. You guys, I did not know this. I used to like wash my hair and get out the shower and just basically like you know, towel it off and throw the double band puff in my hair and go out the door and maybe slap a little gel in and then go and my hair would be sopping wet. But she said, don't do that. And this is why. I have here, dun, 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 important to read pages 149. So I'm just going to go ahead and read the tip right now. Oh, hallelujah. Okay, so she said, avoid placing holders or ties on the hair that is dripping wet. Pulling our hair taut into a fixed holder while it is sopping wet can be terribly damaging to our tresses over time. Hair is stretched and most elastic when wet. As our hair dries, it naturally begins to contract. While the stretched hair is, is trying to return to its normal state, it is still being held taut in its stretched position by the ponytail holder. Over time, the area near the holder grows weaker from the stretching and hair's inability to properly contract during drying. The end result is breakage. It is always best to create any ponytail puff or bun style on hair that is moisturized and almost completely dry to avoid wet holder stress. Once hair is completely dry, loosening holders that were styled on damp hair is strongly advised. Altering the position of ponytails and puffs is also encouraged to fight breakage. Every time I read this book, you guys, every time. Really, I get a tip, something I didn't know, something that's great for my hair. I didn't know it. I will no longer do a puff on sopping wet hair anymore. So, she goes over weaves and braids. Yes, she does. Weaves and braids. So, she said weaves are a great styling option and braids. Weaves and braids are a great styling option that gives hair a break from manipulation. The problem is, is that many times, 
People get weaves and braids and put their hair away and think they are free from having to deal with their hair. And weeks pass without hair ever receiving any fresh water or moisture, which is a recipe for breakage. You cannot get a weave or braids, you guys, and think you just don't do anything to your hair. Like, that's it. You can just be not doing anything to your hair until you take it down and wash it. That Your hair will just come out and get jacked up. Matted, it will come out. It will When you take the weave out, and there will go your hair as well. Hair on the hairlines and edges of your hair is delicate, so make sure the braider does not pull your hair too hard, you guys. I'll do a whole separate video on how I transitioned with braids, but that's very important. Um, and then she gave a trick, which is, I use that same trick when I transitioned, I had no problem, so it definitely works. My hairstylist just have me do it all the time. She said to anchor the braid with your finger and pull in the opposite direction of the braider's motion. This will prevent the hairline from receiving the brunt of the braiding tension. So basically, when they start to pull your hair, I don't know if you can see it, but as they start to braid your hair and they're going this way, you want to anchor it. Like when they put the knot on, you want to hold it and you want to pull your finger and hold it and pull it this way. So as they're pulling back on your hair, the tension is not going directly here. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to hold the braid in its place while they're braiding. And I used to do that all the time with my hairstylist. Never had any problem with my edges thinning or anything from braids. So that's a true tip that I totally grew my hair along with when I was wearing weaves. So yeah. Signs that the braids are too tight. Then the other tip, which my, my hairstylist, Kathleen, shout out my hairstylist in LA, miss you. Mwah. Don't allow the braider to add too much hair to the section as it will increase breakage as it struggles to support the braid. She said a good tip for the cornrows is that you either do advanced corn, cornrows, also known as Ghana cornrows, banana, or step up cornrows. Shout out to my old stylist in LA, Kathleen, she used to always do my hair this way, you guys. She was the best. I miss her. I love her. She's like the best hairstylist in the world. And I, she always stepped up my cornrows, and now I understand why. So basically, when they do your cornrows in that style, you start braiding a little bit, it, like your real hair to your scalp. And then they get, uh, after they've braided a couple of twists, they add more hair to the cornrow gradually. So it builds up. So all the tension isn't right there on the front and weighing down your hair amazing. I had no problems. My hair thrived. Miss you, Kathleen. Love you. Maintaining braids and weaves. Um, she said you need to rinse and wash on a weekly basis. Um, you want to go ahead and dilute your shampoo and conditioner. It's the most effective way of cleansing braids and weaves to prevent buildup. Put in an applicator bottle for precise placement between the um, tracks. So, and you want to always still seal your hair with oil. Make sure you get the oil up in there with applicator bottle as well. Um, she said cornrows, you need to cleanse those every 7 to 10 days. Um, and use spray-based moisturizers. Those are preferred from cornrows. So something you can just put in a bottle and spray base and moisturize your hair. For weave, she said, always make sure, this is so true, always make sure your weave is completely dry underneath the weave and also that your hair is completely dry underneath your wigs. Damp hair in dark, warm locate, uh, places are a recipe for mildew, odor, and bacteria growth. Period, you guys. Like, if you're gonna wear weave, you're gonna have to be disciplined to be up underneath the dryer because if your stuff isn't dry, you're gonna have issues with mildew, mold, all kind of stuff in your hair, stench. Don't do it. Very important. She said hair needs regular rest between periods between braids. You guys, OMG, once again, Kathleen, Kathleen, if you're watching this, love you. Thank you for taking care of my hair. Wish you were here. Oh my goodness, this is so important, you guys. You have to have a rest in between your hair when you take the braids out or the weave out. She said it allows you to evaluate your hair and apply the correct moisture and protein treatments that you need on your hair since it's been up in a weave, which helps you prevent breakage. Once again, Kathleen. I never understood why. I, she'd always just be telling me what to do. She's like, that's my head from the neck up. And I'd be like, but why can't I go straight into it? I want to do it. She's like, no, your hair needs a break. And I'm like, okay. And I didn't know why, but that's why my hair, I never had any problems when I wore weaves or braids. My hair thrived. I transitioned just fine. And I don't have thin edges because, you know, she knew what she was doing as a stylist. And I listened as a client, and that's important. Sometimes, you guys, you got to do, if you want to wear certain hairstyles, you got to do things that are going to protect your hair.
Most importantly, as we already discussed, the hair that is not properly maintained under a weave will suffer extreme breakage and matting. And I do have a friend that that just happened to. I just want to go ahead and encourage you. You know who you are. It's okay. I know you took your hair down the weave and it matted and some of it came out to the ball, to the scalp, but it's okay. Now you have these tips and, you know, you know how to maintain it properly. Your hair will grow back, so don't, don't worry about it. It'll be okay. So just a little shout out to my friend there because I know it was bothering her. Okay, so then she went over trimming. And she said that there's a myth here, you guys. I didn't know this because I've heard this a couple of times. But she said that the myth is the myth of that trimming hair on a strict six, eight, and ten week schedule. That is a myth, and it's simply not true. That does not mean that it's just going to make your hair grow any faster or better. Um, and it actually keeps a lot of women at shoulder length for life. So, and there's reasons for that. She said. Um, because you may be trimming the hair at a rate that's too fast, fast, faster than what it's growing, so your hair ends up just constantly getting shorter or staying the same length. So you really can't do it that way, she said. Then she said, on the other end of the spectrum, there are people who don't believe in trimming at all. And she said, no trimming can lead to massive deep cuts and further down the road. So you can't not cut your hair either. So she said, how often and when to trim your hair is personal. When trimming is properly synchronized with personal hair growth rate, so hair removed is routinely less than the hair growing in, it is possible to grow long hair. Okay, this is my aha. Didn't know this. I don't know if y'all knew, but here we go. Always trim hair straight across. Okay, at least one eighth to one fourth of an inch above the problem area. Who knew? Trimming at a slant will expose more of the bottom and interior of your hair shaft to damage and increase its chances of re-splitting under pressure in the future. All this going this way, this don't do it. Stop. Just don't do it. Straight across. Straight across. Keep it here. So <laughs> that was a huge aha moment for me. So then she said, don't trim curly hair wet. Wet trimming will damage the hair ends and making it more vulnerable to split. Coily hair can be trimmed in its dry curly state or it can be straightened and trimmed. Trimming hair in the state you wear it in most is what will yield you the best results. I thought that was pretty interesting. Self-trimming. Natural hair is simple. Yes, it is. Now, I used to do this wrong, but now I just learned how to do it the right way, so I'm going to share. It's so good. So she said, self-trim natural hair is simple. She said, put the hair in several braids or large two-strand twists and let the hair air dry. Then you want to trim very the very tips of the hair after it's dried, one-fourth of an inch or less. And she said, trim away any other hairs that will not fit into the twists. So like if they're shorter, you just nip those but you know, by a fourth of an inch. I thought that was amazing. Anyway, those are the tips for this chapter. I'm so stoked, you guys. I really love it. I love that you guys are learning so much. If you haven't watched the other videos, start from page one, you guys. I have um, the Interactive Book Club. It's great. You can start from page one. You can still post your comments. You can still read along. Of course, I'll still share. And so everybody else on the channel will answer your questions. And that's all. You know, make sure you subscribe. Please, please, please subscribe. Please share the videos with your friends. If you have any girlfriends that are trying to grow their hair long, please just copy the video links and email into them. Share it with them. You know, we're all trying to have, you know, beautiful hair. So it's just great to, you know, have a quick resource that you can learn from. And if this video was helpful, boop, 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 boop. Thumbs me up, please. Thumbs me up if the video was helpful. You know, ratings count. I appreciate it. Lots of love. Please subscribe. Gotta go. Getting my workout on. Loving it. Oh, see my guns. <laughs> okay. Bye, you guys. Mwah, mwah. Happy growing.